Welcome to firstoffthebike.com's review show of Ironman Australia. Phil Rockney here, joined by the man who had a day out today, Luke Bell. Luke, welcome. Thank you very much. So close. <laughs> so close and then it hurt so much. <laughs> well, uh, it was a fantastic day. We'll get to that in a moment. Thanks, of course, to our mates at Toyota for getting this up and about. But the women's race was fantastic. We had Lisa Marangon out in front. She was going so well. You saw her out on the course. She was moving very nicely until uh, she was struck down with illness and couldn't get the job finished, which was a shame because she looked okay. Yeah, you know, obviously she comes here and she rate. You just love the way Lisa races. The gun goes off and she goes as hard as she can for as long as you can. And you always see her out here. And you know, last year as well, she was out there for so long. Um, you know, Mel last year took her to the dying moments of the marathon to finally catch her and run home with the win. She's come so close and, you know, but it's such a gallant effort by her. Exactly, she did great. Michelle Bremer did, took the win. She looked amazing too. She got, uh, ran through the field. She ran through a couple of the women, including Jess Fleming, who came in second place. And uh, we also had the return of Michelle Gailey, who's a wonderful story coming back from that melanoma. One of the best smiles in triathlon and, uh, you know, fantastic to see her racing. Yeah, to see her come through the field, you know, it's amazing. And she said she's come off injury. You know, she's, what'd she say? She, she's running once a week at the minute coming back from injury. So for her to, we all know, know that when she's on form, she is a great runner. And as you said, she, she's just trotting around the, around the course <laughs> with this big grin on her face and, and ticking people off as she goes. And of course, Michelle Bremer, fantastic effort for her to take the win. She is a class actor. Of course, she won her first Ironman in Ironman Western Australia, first time out. She did another very good job too. When she runs, it wasn't so much today, and, and we'll talk about this with you, was wasn't so much for time, it was for the win. And that's a different style of racing. Yeah, I think so. And that's, I guess, what a lot of people, or the difference between a pro race and you know the age group race is is it doesn't matter how fast or how slow you go it's about getting across that finish line first and you know she's the quiet assassin she you see her on start list but it seems to go a little unnoticed and you know she she's had a couple of major wins now and i think it's about time everyone started to, to <laughs> i guess talk about her and mention her a bit more um yeah she's definitely got some talent to burn and certainly uh she put that to good use today and it was just good too to see uh a, a I guess a finish line too that was a little bit diverse, different stories coming in, but also too there was there are some good stories and as you said going down the year we may see some of these women emerge again and, and someone like Michelle Gailey who's won around the world is uh, someone to keep an eye on as well. Christy Sim had a good day, she was pushing hard so there was some good stories there on a, on a I guess on a field that was probably a little bit lean in terms of numbers but again you know you can only race and win and, win and beat who's there. Yeah and it's it's, it's always great to watch a race that, you know, I guess there's so many Ironmans that once you get on the marathon, it's the places nearly, the places nearly stay, you know, you get off the bike, maybe it may change once or twice, but to have a race that changes so much and, you know, it keeps it exciting all the way to the finish line. You've, you've got girls, you know, running from, as I said, Michelle running from so far back, Christy Sim out there having a go, um, Lisa Morangan, you know, smacking it all day off the front. And, you know, for it to be that exciting and that close and, you know, you can't ask for any more. No, it makes for good racing. The men's race now will come up to uh, to your day. It was really exciting. I mean, we had, the first 90 Ks, there was intrigue. There was intrigue. The, the whole race was buzzing with Pete Jacobs, who has told us he, sw he hadn't swum in a month. You guys swam at 46, I think, and got out. You're an exceptionally good swimmer. So we expected you, we expected Graham O'Grady to come yep. with you guys, and that's what unfolded. We had Pete Jacobs leaning out of the water, and then the buzz came around. <laughs> While you guys are out there doing your thing, everyone's saying, is Pete foxing? Is he been foxing? Because he looked pretty sharp. What was it like on the pointy end? Yeah, well, you know, as you said, I'd, once I saw Graham on the start line after Melbourne, I, I put in a few extra to swim sessions to make <laughs> sure, because, you know, I'm in New Zealand, he got out on Dylan McNeese's feet, and I've swum against Dylan before, and it's like a motorboat taking off, so it was, I knew you know he was going to be there, and obviously Pete always gets out, you know, front pack swim, and yeah, coming in, you know, there was all that talk, talk going around, and you know, I always thought that you know Pete's one of those guys too that he he can pull a race, whether he's been training or not, he has the potential and the ability and the talent to be able to pull a race out of the box, and I think it was when we were coming back into town and up Matthew Matthew Flinders there, and all of a sudden he just took off, and I'm like. <laughs> Here he goes, this, this, could be, this could be race over and Pete could run away with this. Um, and you couldn't do anything but watch him right away. And, you know, luckily enough, he, he came back to the field later on and, you know, he, he validated his spot, so he's all good for Kona. And so you held your nerve though, didn't you? I mean, there was a time when, when Paul Ambrose in that second lap when, when Pete 
dropped off and, and, and Nick Baldwin dropped off and there was this, you know, again, it was it was looking like Melbourne, this two-up time trial that you had this massive fight with Niels Fromhold in, in Melbourne. You were out the front again. This time you had company with Paul Ambrose. Then Ambrose put the foot down. Calculated effort to stay where you were? Um, yeah, like, uh, as I head down the second lap, um, I, to be honest with you, it was, it was starting to suffer a little bit. Um, obviously, I guess the effects and that, I just wasn't feeling sparky and I, you know, that's a six week turnaround for you. And Paul, Paul to his credit, like, he came out before the race and said he was, he was in good nick and he was flying and, you know, he's as, he's as lean and as fit looking as I've seen him in a long time. So, and obviously he wanted to put some, some time in between him and the runners. Um, so when he went, it was, you know, I, I guess could have chose to go with him, but probably would have ended up with a similar scenario to Melbourne. So it was more of, whether it was a choice or conserved effort was, there really wasn't much I could do but watch him ride away. Um, and then, yeah, got off the bike and hopefully, you know, you'll be able to reel him back in. But And you ran tough though, you did a really good job. You went from 6.49 down to five minutes, down to four minutes. I think you got under the minute at one point and it, was it looking for you like this is it? Um, yeah, like the, the first lap of the run was was quite tough to find a, find a rhythm. Um, didn't feel great getting off the bike and Paul was still moving well, which, you know, you expect in those first few laps. And then, you know, the legs come around and that second, third lap, I sort of knew probably by the end of the third lap, if I didn't catch him going into that fourth lap and definitely by the far turn, um, you know, I think it got down to maybe 40 seconds by some splits out there and then, you know, 35, 36k, k, there was a... A big mushroom cloud and you know Paul had his head back with the way he runs and, and credit to him he he's he's a tough athlete yeah he runs like he ugly grits, but he's good he grits and bears and you know he's going to give 110 percent all the way to the finish line whether he's in front or or coming from behind so you know he had a great race out there and he took the bull by the horns went with it and hung on well great day for you second place can't argue with that it's uh you're certainly back and back in town and uh, and gaining points and getting yourself all sorted out for october thanks for spending a bit of time with us this has been first off the bike on tour presented by toyota